Hey everyone, it's Tom at Pancake Analytics, and thank you for taking some time away from IG threads. I think everyone's loving that um, Twitter clone. I won't say Twitter clone, um, doesn't have all the functionality of Twitter, but you know, the IG crowd is loving it. So it's been a couple of months, right? And I've been very busy. I'll go more into detail of that in this deck later on. But I wanted to purposely wait till the first week of July to do this one, right? Because I already missed sharing the August prediction on YouTube, at least. I uploaded it to the website, uh, pancakebreakfaststats.com. Um, but wanted to wait for the first week of July so I could get another month of actual data and predict that to September 2023, end of the month. So without any further ado, the monthly shiny cardboard forecast, seven categories, Pokemon, basketball, Marvel, baseball, football, hockey, and soccer. And just as a little refresher, uh, the data source is card ladder indexes. I've also created a custom uh, Marvel index that I forecast off of. Um, by the end of this video, if you like what you see, if you want to have a deeper discussion with me, uh, just get a hold of me on Instagram, pancake underscore analytics. That's the easiest way to get some time with me. All right, so we're all gathered here today to discuss. I'm going to reintroduce myself a little bit in the next upcoming slides. I'll share the output of the forecast for trading cards through September 2023. I want to recap everything, put in a nice little bow for you. So who is this nerd anyway? And why am I watching this video? Well, you can either find, follow me on the IG and find out more, but really in a nutshell, right? This nerd is bringing his over 10 years career experience in data science to the fandoms. Uh, I currently work for a marketing firm where the specialty is in customer segmentation, um, attribution modeling, attrition modeling, etc. Dealing with transactional data. I'm purposely trying to make that sound very, very boring and put you to sleep so that you can see what I'm about to do is like really exciting and fun for me. Uh, one of the goals here is for you to learn analytics and data science through the lens of Pokemon, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Disney, trading cards, and video games. Uh, there's also some arguments and rants all about the same topics. I'll be on IG, lots of memes. Beyond analytics and data scientists, Mostly, I am just a fan trying to use my skills for good. So over five years of presenting at Comic-Con and collectible convention presentations, Toronto Comic-Con, Megacon, Fan Expo New Orleans, Atlanta Comic-Con, Tampa Bay Comic-Con Convention, Anime Festival Orlando, Pensacola, Pensacola's own Pensacon and Metrocon. It's mostly a um, anime themed convention. And now get ready for it. I'll be adding one more to the repertoire this year. I'll be presenting during the national. So the national sports card convention and it's courtesy of CGC cards. They reached out to me. Uh, we worked out to where I'll be doing two panels. So one on Friday, July 28th at 2 p.m. Central Time Zone. I'm currently in the Eastern Time Zone. So this is a nice little trip for me. I'll be doing a sports card data science discussion. It's going to be called Pick and Rolls, Probabilities, and Play Actions. I'm going to be introducing some new analysis out there. Hopefully, we answer some fun collecting questions driven by data, living in data scientists. Saturday, July 29th, 
2 p.m. Central again. It's going to be the Pokemon TCG data science discussion. So Pikachu power-ups and probabilities, not exactly the same as what I do at Comic-Con. So I did a couple of tweaks and went into a little bit more deeper on a few areas. So if you're going to the National, we'd love to see you there. Um, I'm going to be up there Thursday. Not sure if I'll make it in time to do the floor because I think I'm flying Thursday afternoon. So probably won't get there in time to actually make it to the floor on Thursday. But Friday and Saturday, I'll definitely be at the vendor floor. And it's my first national too. So it should be a lot of fun. So now what you're really here for, the forecast results to the end of September 2023. I've modeled seven card ladder indexes and projected out over the next three months. The approach I used is a Holt Winters time series. And I've adjusted the parameters to give an output of less than 11% MAPE. Um, in other videos where I've done its industry best practices, where if your mean average percent error is less than 10%, then you have what's called a good model. So if we are less than 11%, I say stop the parameter. That's good. We got the right seasonality, the right date ranges. This data was also trained on and tested to two months of actuals. It's always important when someone's showing you a forecast or a time series that they train and test it, right? It's easy to take all the actual data you have and just make trend assumptions you see a lot of videos where um, you know, they'll pick up on a trend and talk about the trend. And well, obviously this is a good shiny cardboard investment because the trend's going up. Well, you have to actually prove first that you can predict it. That's what training and testing does. So the reason why I picked the Holt Winters is because at the end of the day, it's sales data, right? And Sales data is usually very seasonal. And when we get to the seasonal indexes, we'll see that these categories are seasonal as well. So nearly all categories are showing a predicted lift in monthly value comparing September 2023 versus August 2023, with the exception of one, and that's the uh, Pokemon TCG it shows an expected 3.3% decline. The long-term outlooks for all categories emphasize two points that I want you to understand is that entry into the market is key. And secondly, the boom was never going to last. I've been talking about that for, seems like at least a couple of years now. So, and that's what, you know, my models when I first developed them were showing. Year over year, your biggest losers are Marvel, Pokemon, and basketball in that order. And then two years, biggest losers, Pokemon, basketball, baseball. So here we'll look at the monthly stats. So to the left-hand side is by category, that bar chart. It's the month over month change. So that's that September versus August 2023, so both of them are still predicted values. And then to the right is the monthly seasonal index, which is a chart that shows how the actual data compares to the forecasted values. So the Pokemon TCG is the only category predicting decline short term. So I do want you to take the monthly lifts with a little bit of a grain of salt any percentage month over month can fall into traps of seasonality, right? So the seasonal index shows us when cards tend to sell higher or less than expected. Some like to call this a liquidity, sorry, a liquidity chart. <laughs> Personally, I like to use it as a guideline of when to add pieces to my collection. I .e. were in July and soccer and Pokemon might have some steals according to this. If I look at that seasonal graph, right? Soccer 
5% lower than expected. Pokemon, 2% lower than expected. Marvel tends to send for, sell for a hot 5% more. So I might have to hold off on getting some Ghost Spiders and Black Widows for Natasha. Now we're on to the year over year. So I will do a little drill down into a category. On the right side, you'll see a Marvel forecast detail. To the left side, it's the year over year of each category. So Marvel shows the largest predicted decline year over year. And here's the reason why I wanted to do a dive into Marvel. Marvel continues to correct itself from its own individual boom. Uh, there's been some larger auction house sales as of recent, but when we start discussing causation, and I will get into causation a little bit more. This is kind of that teaser spoiler. No, Marvel likes to tease things, so why can't we? When I tend to see a large public sale, it often leads to an influx of lower sales. So I know you're saying, Tom, speak English with us. So what I'm saying is that when you think of like drivers as to why a bunch of listings hit the market all at once, it's usually in the case of Marvel, Spider-Man PMG sold for X amount and it gets everyone excited. And they think now is the time to strike. Now in our two year change, I have a comparison to the right. It's actually hockey versus baseball cards. And I'll explain that more in just a couple of minutes. And then I have a two-year change for all categories. Marvel, the model is finally catching up like I thought it would. If you recall, last time we showed the prediction, it was a 400x, which, you know, it was still relying on mostly all that boom data. But now it's looking a little bit better. Um, I still think Marvel will probably have more of a correction going on. So I wouldn't even trust that 15% growth. But Pokemon and basketball are neck and neck as furthest from their respective booms. Pokemon specifically is lapping its boom in the two years. Um, but I really wanted to call out hockey and baseball for a moment. So here's the reason why. They were both very steady early, early on when I started these forecasts. Uh, the model predicted corrections for both. And at the time, you know, it seemed like, oh, baseball was always, you know, the safe bet. What is the model doing? But it accurately predicted the correction. So the correction is actually leading to more of a the stability in baseball, you can see it by, you know, the model is flattening out towards the end. It has a little bump at the end of the month. But hockey is more elastic. It's showing towards the end and still thinks it's going to get closer to what it's seen previously because that's what a Holt Winter does, kind of um, reverting back to the mean. Now I do want to go into correlations and causation. So on the screen is May 2023 end of month grades by category, June 2023 by category grades provided by Gem Mint. Sorry, by Gem Rate. I keep saying Gem Mint, but they are Gem, <laughs> they are gem Rate. Uh, just pulled this off of their Instagram. They do monthly updates like this, weekly to their story. And here is what a correlation you can make out of showing what I previously showed you with the prediction and the grades. You would think that grades completed and two-year predicted changes are highly correlated. So the reason why I'm calling this out is grading is only one of many factors, right? That plays into predicting expected card values. Now, if it was the only factor, the forecast would be vastly different. You know, you'd probably think that multi-sport racing, um, 
UFC, I believe that is, MMA and boxing are probably good buys, you know, as they're not declining in price at the same rate that they're being graded at. But on the next slide, I'm going to show you why this is a faulty assumption and why we just can't take a correlation and apply causation to it. And what you'll see on the screen is a pretty basic stats class example. You know, probably most people who are watching, if they're analysts or in the analytics field, you've seen this example before. And it's a line graph comparing sales of ice cream cones and number of shark attacks. So correlation does not mean causation. So a common misconception, and eventually it always does, leads to unfavorable collecting slash investing, shiny cardboard decisions, is correlations are driving, are the driving force of causation of card value purchases. But I want you to think of your own collecting preferences for a second. You know, how many purchase decisions do you make are based solely on two factors? I can't think of any. So this possesses a large challenge with speculative collecting and trying to find the next thing to boom. So in short, right, yes, if you only had ice cream sales and shark attacks, they'd be highly correlated, but neither one is causing the other, right? Like the more ice cream I sell does not mean that there's going to be more shark attacks or the more shark attacks doesn't mean that everybody's like running out to go eat ice cream, right? That's where, you know, predictive modeling, if you're not throwing the right vectors in factors, you know, you're going to get very unfortunate, incorrect um, conclusions out of it. Now, when you think of that example of ice cream cones and sharks, you know, you've got to think of season and temperatures and, you know, you tend to buy more ice cream and you're also at the beach more often when, you know, temperature rises. So here's what I want you to take away from this video. I'll be presenting at the National Sports Card Convention this July, courtesy of CGC Cards. You can find me at their stage, and it's a really good opportunity to FaceTime with me to discuss. Yes, you know, let's be collectors. Let's get excited about data. Let's get excited about cards. I built a Holt Winters Time Series for seven categories of trading cards, and the results I shared are predicting out to September 2023. The reason why I'm calling that out is that I'm not telling you what's already happened. I use historicals to forecast, to predict. These are predicted values. I like to think of analytics in four quadrants. There is descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. So we're in the predictive realm and everything should be additive of each other. 90% um, of what you see out there from other content creators, YouTubers, Instagram, Twitter, and then eventually threads is going to be descriptive. And it's just gonna be sale, record breaking, yes or no. So kind of one of my goals is let's go beyond that. We have the data, let's make some better, wiser collecting decisions together. And to do that, we gotta predict. And what it's telling us is nearly all categories are showing a short-term lift month over month, except for Pokemon, which is also showing the largest decline compared to two years ago. It's because they're lapping their boom. Correlation does not mean causation. So be careful out there trying to find the next boom or the next big thing. Think ice cream cones and sharks. So if you enjoyed this video, let me leave you with one more thing. Dramatic pause. I want to talk about segmentation a little bit, the importance of segmentation and why as a collector it helps evaluate your collection 
and purchasing decisions. Just take Pikachu on the screen, for example. You're kind of starting off when you collect in that top left quadrant. You know, you can barely see Pikachu, right? You want to get to the bottom right Pikachu as quickly as you can. And segmentation, learning from the data, gets you there the quickest. So how does it do it? For example, a K-means cluster uncovers trends with our Pokemon TCG data to understand the relational similarities and differences on key trading card game attributes, sales, and values. The more clusters, the clearer our picture, right? That's how you get to the clearest Pikachu. So why am I ranting and rambling about this? Is because I've developed a practical use for segmentation for collectors. And Card Ladder reached out to me going on a couple of months now, and it was to develop a TCG index for them. So the TCG83, and I built this off of an RFM segmentation, recency, frequency, monetary, covers Pokemon, MetaZoo, uh, Magic the Gathering, Dragon Ball Super, and Yu-Gi-Oh! That's out there for you on the Card Ladder app, developed by yours truly. So have fun with that. I am trying to make a positive impact in the space using my skill set in the right ways. This seemed like a really good opportunity to apply that, make a difference in collecting. So everything that was shown here is currently free and on the website. I'll do um, IG posts about it but it's already readily available on pancakebreakfaststats.com. All the charts and graphs update before I do these videos. So thank you very much. Hope to talk to you soon. Maybe even see you at the national. So have a great night, great morning, whenever you're watching this. Thanks again. Hope you found this valuable. Hopefully 